Let's address that big number that came out on Friday, 528,000 new jobs. Also, revision up in June. And by the way, wages up at a rate of 5.2 percent year over year. President Biden came out and said this shows that his economic policy is working. What did you make of those numbers? I think it's more mixed. I, I celebrate all the extra uh, jobs, and that's surely a good thing to see. But my principal concern, as you know, David, has been that we've got an overheated economy. And it, if you overheat the economy longer and longer, you get more and more inflation and bigger and bigger problems down the road. And everything in this number says to me overheating, not yet under control, not on a path to being under control. So I was actually not gratified uh, by these numbers, but my concern was actually magnified. So what message does this send to the Fed, do you think? Look, I, I don't think the Fed has the thread right now. Uh, as I said on this show last week, I think the idea that we're at the neutral rate or near the neutral rate is not a defensible concept. And now when we're seeing wage inflation unambiguously after this number accelerating, after this number, after the ECI, after the Atlanta Fed, we have by every reasonable measure of core inflation um, inflation running somewhere plus or minus five uh, percent. That is more than it was when Richard Nixon uh, put price controls in place. That is not acceptable by any dimension. And if we don't act on it and act strongly on it, and that means raising real interest rates uh, significantly, then we're just setting the stage for stagflation. Here's what I'm very worried about, because uh, we've seen the movie before. I'm worried, and I was interested to see that Paul Krogman, who's hardly agreed with me in general on these things, expressed exactly this concern uh, today. I'm worried that we're going to see some good news on non-core inflation, on commodities, on what's happened in gasoline, for example, and we're going to see a bit of economic slowing. And that's going to lead the Fed to think that things are under control. But in fact, underlying inflation is going to be still completely unacceptable. Things are going to go up and down in terms of uh, non-core inflation. And if we've got a labor market that's red hot, that's only going to mean constant or even accelerating inflation. And we're going to have a situation like we did in the 1970s, where we perpetuated inflation by not doing enough to contain it. The doctor tells you to take all your medicine. If you take only some of your medicine, you're going to get the illness back. The bacteria are going to be resistant, and it is going to be worse. And that is the risk that I believe we are running in this situation uh, on the path that the Fed is predicting and on the path that the market is expecting. Another big piece of news this week I came from that Inflation Reduction Act, which you talked about last week on the program, saying you were glad to see the bill. It's been adjusted in some ways to accommodate particularly Senator Sinema from Arizona. But as of right now, it looks like it may well pass the Senate this weekend and maybe be enacted next week. So what do you make of the bill as it looks now, the package as much as we understand it? This is really positive news. This is good news on health care. This is good news on the environment and energy. This is uh, good news on uh, tax reform. This is going to make our economy uh, better, while at the same time reducing the budget deficit and contributing, albeit in a small way, to a uh, reduction uh, in inflation. But it is a beginning, a very important beginning, not an end. We still have huge international tax loopholes that are driving businesses abroad. We still, shockingly, and this is something that really disappointed me, and I was sorry with the judgment that uh, Senator Sinema came to, we still have the carried interest loophole that is allowing many of the wealthiest Americans 
to pay taxes at a much lower rate than the people who clean uh, their floors by getting capital gains on what is really uh, earned uh, income, and it is uh, just wrong, and it makes me worry about our politics that it has lasted as long as it has. But look, that's for another day. For today, it's to celebrate that this is a good and important bill that is moving the country uh, forward. And I think it's a tribute to the perseverance of many, the perseverance in negotiating and negotiating and negotiating of Senator Schumer, of Senator Manchin, who many people have raised uh, questions about and who I don't agree about on everything, but who has stuck with some basic views he had about the importance of not adding to inflation for a year, and contrary to what many people said, was prepared to reach a deal if it was the right deal and stayed at the table. And above all, I think it reflects the fact that President Biden laid out an agenda, pointed to things that he thought were very important, recognized that not everything he started with was going to happen, but that some things needed uh, to happen. And for him, for Secretary Yellen, for Chief of Staff Klain, for NEC Director Brian Deese, who played a big role in all of this, uh, I think this is a very substantial uh, victory. And the fact that it took a long time coming shouldn't blind anybody to the fact that it's something very important. Let me address one specific issue that's come up in the scoring, as it's called. Uh, the Joint Committee on Taxation, which is bipartisan, came out and said that, in fact, uh, a fair amount of the tax burden would fall on people who make $400,000 or less. And I understand what that is. It's saying if the corporations are paying more tax, some of that is going to go to the employees and the, the regular consumers. What do you make of that argument? Is it true? I don't think it's very good economics. I think that the corporate share owners and other capitalists pay the vast majority of corporate taxes in general. And I think that's even more true with respect to corporate subsidies and loopholes. And it's corporate subsidies and loopholes that we're going after uh, as a consequence of uh, this. Uh, I think the vast, vast majority of Americans are happy to see the tax rate on companies like Amazon go up, and they're not worried that that means an increase in their taxes. They'd much rather see us, when we need tax revenue, as we do now, go after companies that year after year after year are reporting billions of dollars of profits to their shareholders and still not paying taxes at a rate of even 15 percent. And that is all that this bill goes after. High profits to shareholders, no taxes. That's the right thing to do. So finally, and briefly, if we can, Larry, tell me, does it change your view about whether Washington works? Because if you look at actually what this Congress has done, some of it bipartisan, some of it not, it's gotten an awful lot done with a 50-50 Senate and a narrow majority in the House, and a fair amount of it bipartisan, like the infrastructure bill, like the CHIPS Act. I think it does. David, I've said it on your show before. The great... Um the great thing about America is its, its resilience, its capacity for self-denying prophecy. Everybody predicts that our system is going to collapse, that nothing's going to work, that we're not going to be able to do anything, that we're not going to meet our challenges. And that generates sufficient alarm that ultimately we do step up. Now, we've got a long, long way to go, but I feel better about the fiscal side of what our country is doing uh, today than I did a week ago or a month ago or, frankly, uh, a year ago. And I think that that's something that all of us should take some satisfaction from. I'm not sure everybody is, though. Is there a communications failure? Look, I think when you have a process that's as messy as this one, when you have as much transparency as today's uh, news stories filed every two hours, social media tweets. It's just hard, you know? Great surgeons accomplish remarkable things, but if people had to see the surgery, it would all feel pretty grim and awful. And it's a bit like that uh, 
with uh, legislation uh, like this. So I'm not sure we are there, and I'm not sure we will get there. But I think that ultimately, it's going to be the results uh, that matter. And we're going to have less climate change. We're going to have America more as a process. Millions of people who were worried about their right. bills for health care right. now have them assured. Right. And people are going to go to the drugstore and they're going to get lower prices. Yeah. And I think ultimately yep. it's results, right. not process, that matter. Yep.